All right. So, glitch. so as I was saying that, you know, it's uh, it's a blessing to see, you know, how God uses different men and women in the Bible, uh, even though, you know, they are, they have their faults and failures. And uh, no matter what their status in life, God still can use them to bless and uh, bless them and to use them to bless others. So what's important to note that so far with what we have learned is that, you know, um, as long as we are all willing to trust God and to be used by God, you know, uh, we, we can be blessed and we can be a blessing. Amen. So tonight, um, I'm going to talk about the life uh, and ministry of prophet Elisha mentioned in two kings in the Old Testament. Okay, his name Elisha in Hebrew is El, El uh, meaning God, and Sha meaning save, to save. So the meaning of Elisha is God save, God is salvation. Okay, so Elisha uh, was born in Abel Mahola. And he, uh, there's a town in northern kingdom of Israel. And he was the son of a farmer. Okay, And Elijah was chosen by prophet Elijah to be a prophet. And subsequently, uh, Elijah succeeded. Elijah succeeded Elijah when Elijah was taken up to heaven. He didn't die. Okay, So both Elijah and Elisha lived during the time where there was great political and religious turmoil and divide in Israel, uh, where the kingdom of Israel was divided into two. Okay, um, So uh, my prayer tonight for all of us is that as we learn a little about the life and ministry of Elisha, that God will reveal to us his heart, you know, his heart of love and compassion for the Jews, for Gentiles, for the whole world, you know, to, to save us, to forgive us, to redeem us uh, from our sins. So I hope that even as we go through tonight, you will be able to see the heart of God. As I was saying, the, uh, Elisha lived during the time where the kingdom of Israel was divided into two. Um, this happened when, you know, King Solomon, despite being so blessed uh, with great wisdom and wealth by God, and he was the one who was successful to building the first temple in Jerusalem. But King Solomon did not have, uh, did not have a good ending, uh, did not end his reign well, because, you know, he married a lot of foreign wives that were, that were idol worshippers. And they turned his heart away from God towards worshipping the foreign gods, you know, the, the idol of Baal, you know. Uh, and so, um, you know, he, when his son took over, when he died and his son took over, Rehoboam took over as king, there was a revolt against the son that caused a civil war that divided the kingdom of Israel into two parts. We have uh, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Okay, now as I mentioned, um, King Solomon, King David, and the son Rehoboam, you know, they ruled from Jerusalem. But there was ten tribes uh, that rebel, uh, and uh, it was led by Jeroboam, a servant of uh, Rehoboam. And they formed the northern king, kingdom, which is called Israel. And that left with two other tribes of Benjam Judah and Benjamin that remain in the south, the southern kingdom, known as Judah. So this was a time um, where, you know, uh, Israel was at war with each other, civil war. There was infighting. They were fighting among the kings in their own kingdom also. So the northern kingdom, uh, unfortunately, were ruled by wicked kings. You know, if you can see the list here, 19 of all of them in the northern part of uh, the kingdom 
all of them were evil, wicked and evil kings and they they caused the people to not to worship god but in, instead worship uh, idols okay and so they 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 forsook god and and uh, and worship the foreign gods and because of that uh, in 200 years time uh, they were conquered and uh, by the Assyrians who came and conquered them and the, the 10 tribes were exiled to various parts uh, of the area there and till today you know the kingdom of Judah has not been re-established you know they say that the 10 tribes were lost forever whereas the southern kingdom was slightly better they had um they had uh, some good kings as you can see here but in the end the last four kings were all wicked and also worship uh, idols and uh, they turned their back against god and 150 years later after israel was uh, conquered uh, they were also conquered this time by the Babylonians. Uh, we all know they were, went into exile into Babylonian. So this time was a period of uh, dark history for the kingdom of uh, Israel, where the, there was great moral and spiritual decline that eventually sent them to exile and captivity. You know, but God is so good that even during this time where they were so rebellious and so wicked and did not, um, uh, obey God and they worship foreign idols God sent prophets to warn them you know from their idolatry from their disobedience to call them back to worship God uh, and to give the people hope help and direction but in the end they refused to listen now um, at this point Juncture, I just want to say, you know, grace uh, is so important for us to receive God's blessing and protection. Why do I say that? Um, you know, even though at that time they were under the Ten Commandments, they were under the Old Covenant, um, there was a measure of grace that was, was given to them uh, by God because God provided the, the avenue of the sacrifices of animals uh, to atone for their sins, you know, the blood of animals to atone for their sins in the temple uh, so that, you know, their sins will be covered for at least a year. Each year, they, they, the high priest would uh, offer the, the sacrifices for the sins of the whole nation. And, uh, and, and so because of that, uh, you know, as they continue to uh, worship God, as they continue to uh, pray in a temple and offer sacrifices in a temple uh, they were they were not they prospered and they were not uh, conquered by their enemies but the minute they turn their backs on god and worship idols that means what what that means is they stop going to the temple they stop worshiping god they stop sacrificing uh, the, the sacrifices the blood animal sacrifices to atone for their sins that is when um, that is when they were uh, conquered you know and defeated by their enemies so you know it's important that now that we have the real grace we have jesus who died on the cross for our sins and and to give us life abundant life on this earth that we should all the more know that we need grace all the time not only just to wash our sins and you know we can get to heaven but to live the life that we uh, god wants us to live on this earth the abundant life that's why we need the grace of god and we cannot ignore that and and think that we can do it on ourselves so you see um you know whenever they turn their backs and do not offer any sacrifices for their sins uh there, there was no covering for their sins so uh, okay so Elijah performed many miracles when he, he was alive, uh, healing such as raising the healing the sick, uh, raising the dead, multiplying food, and overcoming the 
the forces of nature. Uh, for example, he multiplied a widow's oil to pay for her debt. He healed the water of Jericho with throwing some salt, you know, and making the, the, the land fertile again. Um, he raised a Shunammite woman's child from, from the dead. He even multiplied food for a hundred men. You know, sounds familiar, isn't it? And he killed Naaman, a Gentile, a non-Jew of leprosy. And he also parted the Jordan River so that he could go through on dry land. Um, so Elijah was a man of great faith and compassion. And we see the miracles here show the power and compassion of God that was at work. You know, he had healing miracles. He had miracles for provision, miracles that uh, overcame the forces of nature. And he had also resurrection miracles. He raised the dead. And he also, um, he also, you know, when, when, when Elisha died and he was uh, buried in a tomb, uh, in his tomb, and there was a they, they put a dead man on top of his bones, and the dead man resurrected. Wow, you know, we know that Jesus died for, for us so that we, you know, and he, he also resurrected so that he can give us uh, life and eternal life. So, you know, he performed double the miracles of Elijah. Okay. Elijah, Elijah, Elijah also performed miracles, but Elijah performed double the miracles. And uh, in fact, he is the, the, the prophet that has got the most miracles, only second to Jesus. Okay? So, um, it's quite amazing. And Elijah's ministry is a reminder uh, to us that God is always with us. And God will always answer our prayers. You know, whatever needs that we have, when we go to him, uh, he will help us, you know. He has compassion for all of us. And so, um, we also see that Jesus, I mean, Elisha is a type or a foreshadowing of Jesus. Um, because we, we can see that Elijah's ministry closely resembles the ministry of Jesus. And they, they both uh, perform similar miracles. For example, um, uh, okay, before that, you know, both of them had similar names, you know, like God is salvation and Yahshua, which is Yas, Yahweh will save. Uh, both their ministry started at the River Jordan uh, when Elijah was taken up to heaven. They were in, in River Jordan. Elisha received a double portion of the anointing and Jesus was uh, water baptized at River Jordan by John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus there. And both were anointed and chosen by God for ministry. Uh, both performed many similar miracles, including healing the sick, raising the dead, multiplying food and overcoming the forces of nature. Both were persecuted by their enemies. And they were, but they remain faithful to God. So both uh, also were betrayed by their own disciples. So, you know, um, so as, as I said, Jesus is a type of Jesus. Uh, uh, Elijah is a type of Jesus, foreshadowing what Jesus as the Messiah would do when he appears, revealing the heart and intention of God to save, to forgive, and to heal. The world. You know, the ministry of Jesus Christ in the New Testament is the ultimate fulfillment of God's intention uh, for this world. That is to save, to bless, to forgive, to heal, and to deliver humanity. So as we look at the life of Elisha and the miracles he performed, we get a glimpse of the heart of God, the heart of Jesus, what it was his intention, what was his compassion. You know, what he came to do. And I said, you know, he came to save, to bless, to forgive, and to heal all of us. So tonight, I want to look at a well-known miracle of, of Elisha uh, for us to see the heart of God or to have a revelation of the heart of God. And this 
miracle is where Elisha multiplied her widow's uh, small jar of oil so that she could uh, sell it and pay off her debts. Uh, this story is taken from uh, 2 Kings uh, verses chapter 4 verses 1 to 7. A very short uh, passage, only seven verses. <clears throat> okay, let, let me read uh, from verse 1. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Now the widow had just lost her husband, the breadwinner of the family, and now the creditor, because she can't pay uh, the husband's debt, that uh, they want to take her two sons as slaves. So it, it is a tough time for her, you know, and uh, she has to carry that burden of debt, the burden of the thought of losing her two sons and that she'll be left alone. And who's going to take care of her? Who's going to feed her? You know, she has all these prob problems. But her immediate, uh, immediate attention was her two sons. You know, she, she wants her two sons. And she came crying to Elijah. You know, it's, very, it's, it's good that, you know, whenever we have a problem or whenever we need help from God, I mean, we need help. We need to go to God. You need to come to Him. Amen. Thank God that she didn't go to a loan shop to, to get help, to get the money and to pay off the, the creditors, her creditor. But she came to the man of God. And at that time, Prophet Elijah represented God during that time. And she came to him and cried out for, for help, saying, my husband is dead and um, and the creditors is coming to take my two sons to be slaves. So I just want to encourage all of us that, you know, we all need help, whether it's, it's for healing, for provision, uh, for a peace of mind, uh, even we need help to serve, to, um, you know, to even read God's word. You know, we, we need God's help. And especially and when we, we are carrying a heavy load or heavy burden, the Bible says, Jesus says that, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay? If tonight you are carrying a heavy load, Jesus says to you, I want to give you rest. What does he mean by that? That means he wants to take the load off you, the heavy burden off you, so that you can have rest. You know, sometimes when you carry heavy load, you know, I'm sure, um, you know, the, the, the group uh, that went to Kota Kinaba, uh, to Mount KK in, in, in uh, Sabah, you know, they had to climb up with their luggages, their, their backpack and all that. And, but they had the the tour guides to also carry their bags for them, you know. So Jesus is saying, you know, you're going up, up the mountain, it's very steep, it's, it's, you know, it's a heavy burden for you, it's difficult, it's tough. But he says, come to me, I will give you rest. That means he will offload the burden for you. You know, that's the heart of God. And, um, and uh, he says that uh, I am, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, you know, we all need, to need help. Okay. And, um, you know, we can't, we can't do everything ourselves. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can't do it based on our own wisdom or ability alone. We need God and it's very important. The first thing we need to do is come to God when, you know, we, we are in trouble or we need help. Okay, then in verse 2, Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. You know, Elijah asked uh, the widow, what shall I do for you? A lot of times when we want something from God, uh, 
you know, you come to God for help. We tell God what to do. Okay? Lord, you please, uh, you know, do this for me and uh, get this done for me and, uh, and, and you know, uh, let me receive a lot of money so that I can pay off my debts. You know, that's the normal way, you know, we, we think that God will solve a problem. Um, uh, and so we all often, often tell God what to do, you know. Uh, but from experience, you know, usually God answers in a different way, what we, we, which is not what we, we imagine or think of, you know. Uh, but, you know, God is so good. And uh, Elisha tells her, instead of asking her, what shall I do for you? He, he, he just prevents her from answering that question. But instead, he tells her what to do. Okay, and and um, he asked her, "What do you have in your house?" And she said, "I have nothing." Okay, uh, so um, here we see how she is focusing on her lack because credit her creditor is coming after, and she's got no money, so therefore she has nothing. Uh, so her her focus that time is on her lack, okay? But we need to not to focus on the problem, on the lack that we have, but on abundance that and the inheritance we have in Jesus Christ. To her, that jar of oil is so insignificant that she says, I have nothing. You know, God can use insig insignificant things uh, to be a blessing, to be uh, a tool for our victory to be our answer. You know, God um, used a donkey's jawbone, you know, when, when Samson managed to kill a thousand men with just the donkey's jawbone, which was doubly dead. You know, the donkey was dead. The, the bone was utterly dead because there's no, no flesh, nothing. It's just dry bones. But God was able to use it to to, to slay uh, 1,000 men. And then God also managed to use a young boy without any armor, without any sword to fight the giant Goliath. So you can see to not despise the little things uh, that we have. You know? uh, so, um, and I just want to encourage all of us uh, not to focus on our lack, but instead give thanks to God for what we have. You know, there are many things that we can give thanks. Uh, we have a roof over our head. We have food on the table. We have our family. We can work. We're still alive. We're breathing. Uh, one, there's one testimony I heard from a pastor. He said that at that time, he was going through great financial difficulty. And the creditors were coming after him. And they were repossessing things from his house. Uh, you know, his sofa, his cars, and all that. And... Uh, <coughs> and, and so he would uh, dread getting up every morning because, you know, the creditors would be coming, knocking on, on his door, you know. But instead, he chose to focus on what he had and what God had blessed him. He said, oh, I still have the use of a car because they have not come to repossess it. You know, I still have a roof over my head. You know, my family is still with me. My wife has not left me, you know. So he, he tried to look for things that he can give thanks to God. And, um, you know, that, that we do not, you know, um, look down on small things that, you know, God can use for us. In, in the Bible, it says that God has chosen the foolish things to, uh, of the world to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world uh, to shame the, the, the strong, you know. So um, do not say that you are nobody. Do not say that, you know, you are still young or you are just a pensioner or you're too old or you're just a homemaker, you know. Uh, you, or you don't say that you have got no talents. But, you know, God can use whatever the small thing that we give to Him and He can multiply it. He can... Uh, he can uh, yeah, multiply it and, and just uh, use it to be a blessing. 
Okay, so don't focus on the lag. Then in verse 3, he said to her, Go borrow from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. Okay, as I mentioned, you know, um, she didn't tell the prophet what to do. Instead, the prophet uh, gave the solution to her. Okay, he says, go and borrow vessels from everywhere from all your neighbors, empty vessels. And then he gave also a clue here. Do not gather just a few. That means gather as much as possible. Go to everywhere. It means try as hard as possible to get as many empty vessels you can. That was what the uh, Elisha was saying. You know, um, but her she could have said that, uh, you know, how, did, how, how is empty vessels going to solve my debt problem? And the neighbors might be laugh at me as for collecting all these empty bottles, you know. And, um, and so we read in verse 4, And when you come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour into all the, those vessels and set aside the full ones. We know from this story that as she poured the oil, her small jar of oil into those empty uh, vessels, the oil continued to pour and they, they fill up to the, to the brim. And, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, and all the ones, the vessels were all full. But the interesting thing is, Elijah said, shut the door behind you. Uh, when you do all this. You know, um, sometimes we need to um, be aware of our surroundings and uh, I think it is helpful, you know, when you know you want to believe something, uh, you know, from, from God that we should be in a situation where the environment is uh, of faith. That means, you know, for example, when Jesus... Uh, healed Jairus' daughter, you know, she instructed everybody to leave the room except the parents and the two disciples, I think two disciples with them, you know. And, and sometimes when we pray in faith, you know, there will be critics, there will be uh, those who are skeptics and those who lack faith and, uh, you know, and, uh, and doubt whether God could, could heal, you see. So I, I believe that you know, uh, it's important that when we believe uh, God, that you know we we have the same mindset. You know, with different ones that uh, uh, that we know of. That you know, when we pray for someone, uh, you know, sometimes when you go and pray in a hospital, I, I prefer that you know I pray alone with the with the person that is sick rather than the whole family who can include non-believers. And you know. Or even believers. In fact, when I prayed for one lady in, in, who was in the hospital for healing, and then I heard the next time uh, some else, some other Christians went there and, and also uh, visited that, that person. And they complained <coughs> that I gave the sick person false hope of healing. You know? So you can see, you know, different people have their different ideas about God's healing, uh, of God's blessing. And, and so uh, I believe that is why Elisha gave that instruction. So when, so when she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her, she poured it out. And now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. And so the oil ceased. Okay. So, 
they poured until there was no more vessels to pour to, into. And when that happened, the oil start, stopped pouring. So let me ask you, why do you think the oil stopped pouring? And uh, maybe you can think of why, how can this apply to us today in terms of God's supply? What, what can we learn from here? Um, you know, and, and ask yourself, why do you think that the oil stopped flowing? Okay, one obvious reason is there's no more container, <laughs> right? And, uh, and so when there was no more conta empty containers, you know, the oil stopped. But let's see what we can learn from here. Then she came in verse 7 and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Okay, so we can see here the heart of God, you know, Elijah showing so much grace, so much generosity, which represents God, uh, heart and intention. He says, you know, go and sell the oil that you have collected, okay? Get the money, pay your debt, and whatever there is balance that you have, use it for your family, use it for yourself, for your, for your sons and and you know, so um, here we can see the heart of God is, is very gracious, it's very generous. And uh, God was willing to supply more than what the widow asked for. Okay. And uh, let's look at Philippians 4.19 about his supply and resources. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. So God's abundant supply. God's supply has uh, no limit. He has unlimited riches in Jesus Christ. You know, God's supply is, is paid for by, by the blood of Jesus, paid for by the suffering of Jesus. God's healing provision, the peace that you can enjoy, uh, the health that you can enjoy, um, you know, the victory that we can enjoy overcoming difficulties, uh, overcoming sin, has all been paid by Jesus. Okay, So don't think that our healing was just something that God uses a magic wand and say, oh, now you are healed, thing, you know, or now you have money, thing, or now your problem is solved. You just use, it, use a magic wand. No, no, no. It was paid by Jesus through his suffering, through his death on the cross. For you it is very precious so do not discount the blessing of god the abundance of of god because it has already been provided for us you know imagine somebody provide you a free a first class free trip uh ticket on a ship you know that includes board and lodging but if you think you only are entitled to the third class uh passenger uh, seat and with no food, you know, then you're missing out of what Jesus has already paid for you. <coughs> the next thing you can see is that, you know, in verse uh, in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, you know, that's the heart of God, as I mentioned, that he was willing to supply more than what the widow asked for. The, uh, Elijah had compassion for the widow. He knew that uh, you know, she was heavily burdened with this threat of losing her two sons. You know, she had just lost her husband. And then if the sons were be taken away, then she would be alone. Who would fend for her? But all she could think of was saving the son, you know, saving her son first. You know, the other problems, I don't care, you know, about myself. I don't care. I, 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 that can wait. But the immediate problem is my two sons. I need to save them from slavery. You know, but God goes ahead of us. And he, he, he knows that we need those things, uh, you know, sustenance. 
for her and her family. And so, uh, you know, I, I just want to give one testimony, you know. Uh, I did one, one case where, you know, God uh, bless, bless me abundantly and, uh, you know, I could provide you know, the, the things that I needed to, to, to have. And uh, then COVID struck, okay. You know, we all of us didn't know uh, that COVID was going to come, that the virus would be a worldwide pandemic. And um, and uh, during those two years, you know, uh, there was very little income uh, for my firm. And so, but God had already provided the provision for, the, for that period for COVID, you know. I, nobody knew about it, you know. So God had went ahead to provide for, for, for me and my family. So, you know, God is so good that uh, he always oversupply, you know. Uh, that's why in Psalms 23, it says that our cup runneth over. It's always full and overflowing. You know, when Jesus fed the 5,000 and 5,000 men and uh, and then plus women and children, you know, they ate until they were satisfied and there were 12 baskets full of leftover. And when Jesus blessed Peter with uh, a net breaking, boat sinking load of fish, you know, uh, when in the night before they caught nothing, you know, that's the heart of God. God is a God of abundance. That's why he says the devil does not come except to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Do you believe that? You know, uh, that God, that's the heart of God, that he wants to bless you. So let's look at the wise uh, widow's response. You know, how many uh, vessels did she collect? Okay. Um, yeah. Can you guess how many that she collected? Bible does not say, but um, it all depended on whether she took seriously what the prophet said, whether she gave any weight to the words of the prophet, whether she believed the prophet could and would want to help her with her problem. Okay. So how many, you can type in, the numbers here, if you if you think that uh, you know you can guess the the jars number of jars that she collected. Let's say she only collected a small amount, maybe two or three jars, or she could have collected a moderate amount, maybe ten to fifteen jars, or she co she collected an abundance of uh, jars, fifty hundred or more. Okay, because Elijah said, go and collect as many, okay? So, the response is up to her, how many she would collect, okay? And we will see the consequences of her actions, her response. Imagine that if she only collected two or three jars, meaning she was not uh, convinced that you know the Elisha could help her. She did not put any weight to his instruction, thinking what a silly thing to do to collect empty vessels. And the, the tragedy of that is that even though God had abundant supply, you know, God owns the whole universe. Um, and uh, you know, he he owns everything. He is the one who created the whole earth. And uh, his supply is limitless. But if she only collected two or three jars, she might not be able to settle her debt. And the oil had stopped flowing. If she had stopped at three jars or three, two jars, and that, that, it was not enough to pay the debt. Let's say she collected a moderate amount maybe 10 to 15 jars. And it was just enough to settle her debt. There was no leftover for her to use for herself and the family, for her two sons. But if she collected an abundant number of jars, 
you know, 50, 100, 200, 300 jars because she went everywhere. She went to all her neighbors. She didn't collect some, but a lot of them. She could settle the debt plus have many much more extra for herself and her family. So I want to say that that is the heart of God for all of us. Okay, that uh, you know, God wants to give us His abundance, His blessing. Amen. Do you all want that? So let us look at our response from what we have learned uh, tonight. First thing is important that you know we need to run to God for help. We cannot be independent of God. We need to be dependent of God all the time. Whether we need help in different areas or whether you know we need help to serve, to uh, you know to do things and uh, you know to have talents to to accomplish a particular task or to solve a problem, to overcome a habit, uh, a sin, uh, to have healing and provision and breakthrough in, in, in relationship, you know, we need to come to God for help. And um, I, I praise God that uh, our sister being, you know, she when she had the, the cancer scare, you know, she, she came to God. She came running to God for help. And she said that Jesus is the one that can only heal me. You know, she knew that her answer was in Jesus. And, and, and uh, she chose not to focus on the problem, on, on the, the lack that she had. Instead, she said, I have Jesus. Amen. So in Matthew 11, 28, it says, Come to me, all of you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise God. So second thing we need to do is to believe and trust God. We need to put weight on His words. You know, we need to give serious consideration on His words. We need to trust His word. And we need to act on the word that He says. You know, no point God saying this and that, and then you say you believe, but we don't act on the word. That means we don't have confidence in the word to act on it. You know, um, you know when we are sick, sometimes we need to go and see the specialist. You know, we specialize in this particular area, and uh, we we listen to the advice of the doctor, the instructions of the doctor. We take seriously what he says. You know, when we go and see a lawyer, we ask for legal advice. You know, we listen carefully. We we take serious uh, notice of what you know the lawyer says. And so, likewise, we also need to uh, believe and trust God and give weight, give credence to His word. If He says that by your stripes you are already healed, past tense, that means you are already healed, and then uh, you don't, when, when, when you pray, you don't see the physical manifestation of your healing. And a lot of times we say that, oh, I'm not here yet because I don't see the physical manifestation of the healing. But God wants us to believe first that we are healed already, even though we don't see the physical manifestation. Okay? That is giving credence to the word of God. That is believing the word of God. You know, when Jesus said to uh, Martha, you know, her brother Lazarus had just died, and Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Jesus said to her. Martha replied, Lord, my brother has been dead for four days. It's, it's, it stings, you know. And Jesus asked, where is your brother? But Jesus replied, to her, didn't I say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of the God, the glory of God? Meaning, Jesus was telling Martha, you need to believe first, and then you will see the glory of God. 
you need to believe first that we are healed, we are blessed, we are provided for before we see the provision coming into fruition. And, uh, you know, that is putting weight and credence to the word of God. And that's what the widow did, you know, she collected the empty jars, but we don't know how much she collected. She must have collected a lot. Um, because <laughs> the Elijah said, go and sell and use the balance. So, we can see here in, in Luke chapter 11, verse 28. Um, Blessed brother are those who hear the word of God and obey. John chapter 7, verse 38. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living waters will flow from within them. <coughs> So believe in taking the word of God seriously is very important. We need to act on it also. Because our actions will show whether we are, you know, putting weight on God's word or not. <coughs> the third thing we can learn from, from this story is that, you know, to have an expectant heart. You know, you can say us, what can we learn about empty jars, about solving our financial difficulty? You know, how can empty jars help to solve my problem today? You know, for her, yes, maybe, you know, Elijah asked her to pour oil and all that. Is God, Jesus going to pour oil for me? Am I supposed to get all these empty jars for me, for God to multiply the oil? You know, uh, no, because... Uh, what we can learn from here is that those empty jars is representing our hearts being expectant for God to provide for us, to supply to us, that we are supply conscious. We are not lack conscious. Amen? Um, that, uh, you know, when we believe that God will provide, then we expect God to provide, you know. So when we get up uh, every day in the morning, then we tell God, you know, God, you know, I'm ready to expect from you. I know you're going to bless me with this and that. You're going to help me to overcome my problem. You're going to lead me. You give me. You're going to give me instructions. You know, you expect to receive from the Lord. You are not closing the door of your heart from God and saying, no lah, I need to quickly do these things. I need to. Solve, my problem, solve this problem myself, I need to, uh, you know, do A, B, and C, you know, then the problem will be solved, you know, but not allowing God to come and intervene and, uh, and, uh, and bless us, you know. Uh, so, you know, we need God's grace in every areas of life, you know. Uh, and, and so I just want to encourage all of us that we need to, um, have that expectant heart. And so how much we receive from God depends on how we believe and how we perceive and see the heart of God. Okay? So if we perceive and see that God is a very generous God, and He wants to give us abundantly, and we, um, we expect God to, 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 to give us, then we are collecting as many empty bottles for what to fill. And the supply will not stop. Okay, It will only stop if we refuse to open to God for God to, uh, to give to us. You know, when we stop believing that God can, can uh, meet our needs, can um, help us in our, our situation. I just want to end with one um, last uh, passage from Matthew chapter 13, verse 13. This is Jesus uh, saying um, to, in, about the parables they ask because the disciples say, why, why do you uh, speak in parables? Then Jesus said, this is why I speak to them in parables. Those seeing, they do not see. Those hearing, they do not hear and understand. 
in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become callous. They, are, they hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Wow, you know, Jesus is saying, no, there are those who hear, but they don't hear. Those who see, but they don't see, you know, and don't, under don't understand. You know, it's like their heart is so hardened, you know, there's so much unbelief in their heart. And uh, God says, but if they see and they hear and they understand, they have a revelation of who God is, they have a revelation of the heart of God and they turn their hearts towards God, He will heal them. God is then obligated to bless you, to heal you. When you have the revelation of God's goodness through the words of God, you know, his character, his uh, intention for you, you know. So it's important that we keep on reading, keep on meditating on God's word so that we can see how lovely Jesus is, how beautiful Jesus is, how good Jesus is, how faithful Jesus is, that we fall in love with him, that our hearts will turn to him, and that we will rely on Him and we will have faith in Him, that we will trust Him. And in that circumstances, God has no choice but to bless us, to protect us, to heal us. Amen. So I, I hope uh, tonight uh, all of us have been blessed uh, this, uh, as, as we went through the life of Elijah uh, tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Alex. And uh, we still have a couple of minutes. So anybody who has burning questions, would you like to type them in the chat? And I'll read them out. It's a very interesting talk and um, what we ought to do to receive. Yeah, instructions are given. So we'll wait for your questions. Yes, well, well, it takes time to type a question out. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to know that yeah, whatever God asks us to do, even though we might feel uncomfortable or silly, as Pastor Alex says, if we just follow God's instructions, we receive all the blessings. Someone is it's very clear, okay, what we need to do and how to do it. Just okay, let's see if there's any last minute question. All right, I think that's about it. So um let's uh unmute our, our microphones and show Pastor Alex our appreciation for sharing the word with us today on Elisha, prophet and medical worker. I think there's one question, is it? Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, just came in. All right, here we go. Pastor Alex, you asked how many jars? We'll say every jar fills the whole house till she only has a space to fill the empty jar with oil. Um, I'm... Amen. I, yeah. So we need to collect as uh, you know, have have uh, expectant heart all the time, you know, so that God can can continue to fill us, and we can continue to receive from the Lord. Thank you, Doris. CPM. Okay, I think we've come to nine thirty. Pardon.
<laughs> all right, all right. Okay, we have my fun later. <laughs> my fun. <laughs> so, um, I think, I think, okay, we'll call it night. So everyone, if you would like to unmute your microphone, show your presentation to Pastor Alex for tonight's sharing, we, you can do so now. Thank you, Pastor Alex. Thank you, Pastor Alex. Thank you. Good night, Pastor Alex. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Alex. Good night, Pastor Alex. Yeah. Good night, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Alex. Thank you, Pastor Alex. Hello. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. My fun didn't spike my sugar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, Pastor Alex. Thank you, Pastor Alex. Good night, John. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, John. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Okay, we'll end it now. Let me okay. stop the. Okay, thanks, John. Yeah, welcome, Pastor Alex. Nice having it. Okay, we'll.